All right. Uh, Thomas Hill here with CD Technology. It's one o'clock. Uh, we're going to be talking about marketing automation. Um, while I'm kind of uh, waiting for a few more people to kind of get in the room, um, uh, just a just a quick, if, if everybody will kind of go to the top left of their screen, you'll kind of see where there's a attendee chat button. Um, and in that chat area there, you'll be able to type in some questions. Um, so if you see any questions along the way as we're doing this presentation, uh, put those in there. Um, if you would, I'd like to know who is here, um, you know, who you are and, and what company you're with. Uh, kind of do a shout out. So just kind of say hello. Also, this helps us to know who is actually walk, uh, watching and not using an, an AI bot uh, because uh, we, we like to give a, a $50 uh, Aubrey's gift card away at the very end to uh, to the ones that showed up and uh, and are paying attention. So so anyway, I got Jason Cardwell uh, on here. He's uh, he's with Farmers Insurance here in uh, Seymour, Tennessee. So we're glad to have him. Oh, we got Summer on here as well with Expo Equip. Um, they've got a uh, a, a heavy uh, machinery uh, parts business out there in the uh, Central Avenue Pike area out near Powell. So we're glad glad to have them on with us. Um, so uh, I met I met Daniel uh, through uh, Marcus, which uh, Marcus does a, a lot of software stuff. And I met Marcus at the Blunt Chamber. And so um, and and some of you know. In fact, I saw Jason Cardwell this morning. I actually had breakfast with Jason Cardwell this morning at the Seymour uh, Chamber this morning. And so I just want to take a minute to just kind of shout out, you know, for for all those people out there that um, that spend some time doing some networking. Um, in fact, uh, Jorge over at at Expo Quip, uh, I met him at the uh, Pal Business and Professional Association. Um, you know, just want to do a, a quick you know, shout out, you know, spend some time networking. Um, there's a lot of really great networking avenues out there. Um, and, you know, some of them are breakfast, some of them are lunch. Uh, but it is just a really great use of your time because, uh, you know, you may not get direct clientele from from the people that you meet, but you end up meeting other people that, that those people that you meet refer. And so it's, it's just a great way to network and get to know people. And so uh, if you're not a member of your chamber or uh, a business organization of some kind, take a few minutes to become a member. Um, so anyway, uh, most of you already know, I'm Thomas Hill. I'm with CD Technology. We, I, I call myself actually the chief frog eater. Um, and so, you know, for those of you that want to know more of why I'm the frog eater, then uh, you know, shoot me an email or something, and and I'll I'll tell you all about that. But it's uh, one of the core values in our company. Um, so again, I've got Daniel Pope with Be Known. Um, so he uh, he does marketing automation, and I love marketing automation. We do a lot of marketing automation here at CD Technology, and I get a lot of customers that come up to me and say, you know, how is it that you all do and communicate? you know, the way that you do with, with your customers. And, um, you know, we, we have a very specific program that doesn't really work outside of technology. And, and, uh, and so, you know, once I found out about, uh, Daniel and, and his company, I was like, you know, what, we really need to have you on. And so that's how this happened. So Daniel, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah. your company and, and, uh, tell us about marketing automation. Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, thanks Thomas for, for having me. Um, I, I'll give you a quick little backstory on myself. I moved from Memphis to Knoxville in 2021, and I did what any driven entrepreneur does when they move to a new city and don't know anybody. And I spent two and a half years not doing anything, not networking. <laughs> so, so the past year and a half, really, I, uh, I've, I've made it a point to network, to join some young professional organizations and whatnot. And uh, I, I got a chance to, to have lunch with Thomas, and I said, you know, my background in IT has led me to where I am today, which is uh, very focused on marketing automation, which is very technology oriented. So I, I've got a wonderful presentation. It'll talk a little bit more through my story, um, but I don't like wasting time. I like to get down to brass tacks. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen over here. Great. And we will be on the way. Let me know if this is full screen, Thomas. It is full screen. 
It just looks like the oh, there we go. I was gonna say Perfect. it looks like the looks like the Northern Lights, but now it doesn't. We're good. It's now. my little intro slide, just in case. Okay. So, folks, we're talking simple tools and automations to improve your marketing results and get a better ROI. That's what any any company wants to do. And at my company, Be Known, I believe that marketing's job is to actually make money, and marketing is about your market. So. Since 2011, I, I've seen the inner workings of hundreds, literally hundreds of companies. And this is what I've learned. Most companies don't have a sales problem. They have a marketing problem. And more specifically, companies waste a lot of time and money trying to crack the, ooh, the marketing code, if you will. And this is a, a graphic I pulled from a site. And it shows over time since 2011, which is when I actually I started my first business, there are now 14,000 different marketing technology and automation platforms out there. 14,000. So how the heck do we choose the 3, 5, 10 that we need? Well, even more so, this is the sales technology landscape. It gets confusing really fast. But the core issue that I've seen is companies, they don't do the things that work successfully consistently. I'll say that again. This is a mantra that, that I like to adopt uh, and, and I help clients adopt in any new engagement. You need to do the things that work successfully consistently. So how do we fix this? Well, before we talk about all that, I, I want to highlight my journey here. I got my start in computer repair services uh, and uh, well, let me just say I'm not a designer. So we can see that's the logo of my first company back in 2011, Computer Repair Services. I actually even helped um, older folks learn how to use computer and Facebook and email and all that stuff. I quickly switched into website design and meta with my company Meta IP in 2015. That was during the time I worked full time at an IT uh, company back in Memphis. Then I had an idea for a real estate marketing service. Ideas are worth uh, nothing, and that never took off the ground, but I learned a lot about business fundamentals and market research. From there, in 2017, I, I started a company called Helpful Place Marketing. Uh, we did social media marketing, aka we post on social for people. And since 2018, I've owned and operated Be Known, which focuses on marketing systems, advertising, and consulting, aka we do the things that work successfully consistently for our clients. And I, I say all that because I've seen a lot and I've done a lot and I've had a lot of calls with a lot of companies and there are patterns that I've noticed. Uh, about 385 businesses I've, I've tallied up as of a couple months ago. And I, I realized that clients care most about ROI rather than good engagement, clicks, impressions. Hey, you're getting a good impre impression click-through rate the smoke and mirrors, if you will. And I, I don't love to brag on myself. Um, I, I try not to, but I, I wanted to highlight some stats just so you could see that I, I know a little bit about something. <laughs> and over the years, uh, we've generated for our clients over 350,000 email subscribers, 167,000 webinar registrants. That kind of equates to 5x average ROI from ad spend, but tens of millions in attributed sales However, the, the most important thing that I'm passionate about is we've been able to impact 130,000 people positively through our clients' products and services. Our clients, they sell the programs, products, and services, but we drive them in. So uh, I, I like to feel good about the work that we do. Normally at this point, people say, but Daniel, how can this all help me? Well, it boils down to a system. This is an acronym I've created in the business. System stands for it saves you stress, time, energy, and money. S-Y-S-T-E-M. And that's what we're going to talk about today. See, I've boiled down seven core marketing automation systems that you can use in your business, your company, your day-to-day -day marketing and sales activities. Uh, I say marketing, but it also bleeds into sales a little bit, which is completely okay. It just depends on your business model. Let's start first by talking about what the heck are the benefits? Is this going to help me? Well, from an article in Forbes, automation systems save about 240 to 360 labor hours per year. And an article in Del Boomi says that marketing automation, multiple interconnected systems reduce costs by 25%. Those are mainly like your operating expenses and uh, mainly your technology fees. And an article from Frenetics, 
you can see up to a 451% increase in qualified leads using marketing automation. Um, and truthfully, on our side, we see a little bit more than that in some cases, but it, it kind of shakes out to the 300 to 450% increase. So Frenetics was right on the money with that one. But the outcome, the outcome we want to get to is a well-orchestrated process. And I didn't create this image. I didn't take this photo, but I found it on Google and I said, this represents a well-orchestrated process, a beautiful symphonic system. But before we get into the systems, I want you to know that there are building blocks to all of this, just like with anything in any business. Before you make your first 10 million, you need to make your first million, et cetera. So we want to start with simple systems such as lead capture pages, then automated meeting scheduling stuff email automation sequences, CRMs, and marketing scorecards, and all that fun stuff, because that forms a very solid base that we can then build upon. And building upon, we can use tools such as social media posting and social media outreach tools, webinars to existing contact lists, analytics dashboards, retargeting advertising, and then the top tier that most companies strive to get to is webinars to other people's audiences or using strategic partners. Or webinars using paid advertising, like on Facebook. Spend a dollar to get a registrant, to get a conversion, to get a call, to get a customer. Well, let's take it one by one. Lead capture pages. Now, I, I am going to send everybody the slides, so don't worry. This is a lot of information. I like to be detailed because I, I send the slides afterwards, so you can kind of go through it on your own, too. So you're going to see some detailed information. I'm going to talk through it just a little bit, and then we'll look at some examples. Lead capture pages. Well, you've probably seen these before. Hey, enter your email, enter your name, email, phone number to get something of value, like a free ebook or a free video, or even register for a webinar. Landing pages are designed to educate, attract, and compel. They're non-distracting. They collect information. And here are two examples from two very different clients that we work with. One is very B2C. It's dog training. And this is a webinar page, which can be a lead capture page because it's capturing the information from an interested party. And on the right side is our client who has a consulting firm. He helps companies raise investor capital. And this gives away a PDF over his proprietary methodology. There's more on this page, but essentially it's not a website page. It's not a page on the website where they can click through the menu and suddenly they're on the about page and suddenly they're watching a cooking video on YouTube because they clicked the wrong button, et cetera. It's, it's non-distracting, but it also sends the information over to the other platforms. That's all through automation and technology we'll talk about here today. So what happens when somebody opts in or enters their info or registers for something? Well, we want to use a meeting scheduling tool. I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of the people who are listening today, they're trying to sell something through a booked call, through a phone call or a Zoom call or a conversation rather than, hey there, Tommy, go ahead and buy my $1,000 a month service. You just add to cart, check out without any conversation. Well, a better example here is I, as the salesperson in the company, say, hey, Tommy, can I, can I give you a call at 2 p.m. on Thursday? And Tommy says, no, how about, how about Sunday at 1 p.m.? I'm free then after church. And, and I say, well, I don't, I don't work Sundays, man. I feel bad about telling him that, but Sundays is very reserved. And Tommy says, how about, how about next Tuesday at 3 p.m.? And I say, well, I've already got something scheduled then. And that's the cause of low close rates. That's the cause of long sales cycles. The meeting scheduling tool, when I go into a company, normally, they don't have this. If they don't have this, then this equates, this is a uh, leading indicator to a long sales cycle, a low win rate or low close rate. This is the number one thing that we implement that has a, a short, immediate effect with businesses. Uh, you've probably seen this before, Calendly, Schedule Once, Acuity, even CRMs have something like this built in. It's just a way for someone to self-select a time and for them to feel good about them, the prospect, leading the sales process. Hey, I selected a time. Oh, I, I was just going to say, let me let me just yeah. kind of jump in here a minute. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Th this is actually a really I've got a really good example today. So I, I was okay. at a chamber meeting this morning. And uh, while I was at that chamber meeting, 
we had somebody click on our schedule to ask for a free assessment. And um, mm-hmm. this is a customer. This is a customer that we've actually been trying to get for a little bit of time now. And uh, and they they instead of them calling me and not getting me to answer because I was at a chamber meeting, they just yeah. simply went to my website. They saw when I was available. They clicked a time on, on when it was available. And we're going to be talking very soon. So um, that's Perfect. that's a that's a real life example. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent example. I, I hear those stories all the time, too. Uh, but I hear horror stories, like I just mentioned, if they don't have this type of thing. And honestly, it's, you know, in the glorious year of 2024, people want to have modern buyer paths. They want to be sold in a way that's different from the past. Um, I, I mean, personally, my phone does not even, all my calls are blocked. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. So if somebody tries to call me, I want to self-select instead. Anyway. All that being said, pretty self-explanatory. Use something that somebody can self-select. And then from there, we want to follow up. How do we follow up? Well, email is not dead. Email absolutely works. It works every day. I have case studies out the wazoo to prove it. And we want to focus on three core sequences. Three core sequences. And the first one starts with new leads. Hey, Tommy, welcome to my world. Let's push you to take action, push to a call, new leads, push to call. This is for anybody who is opted in, registered, entered into your world through a compliant action. You don't just have the random email from somewhere (laughs) that you've scraped or anything like that. But this pushes them to take action. Normally, it's pushing to a call. This is when you talk about your services. Hey, Tommy, did you know that we help people, and for this example, raise investor capital two times faster than our competitor who you've probably heard about? And, you know, we we do it uh, 50 percent cheaper and we also et cetera, et cetera. Right. Pushes. You want to compel. You want people to take action. But after they've taken action, a.k.a. book to call, then you want to nurture them. Hey, Tommy, thanks so much for scheduling a call. Here's a case study. I I just recorded a video with one of our clients who did XYZ. He raised $6 million in two months. Isn't that incredible? I'd love for you to take a watch. It's less than five minutes. And so you just follow up, right? This isn't just one email. It's a series or a sequence of emails that you can completely automate using, oh, goodness, there are so many email platforms out there, ActiveCampaign to MailChimp to ConvertKit to Infusionsoft and everything in between. But once you've nurtured them and they become a client, let's say they, they did one project with you or bought one service. Well, what happens when they kind of fall off the radar? You want to re-engage. And this is what I call buyers re-engage. Um, it's not a sexy term for it. It's just what it is. Buyers re-engage. It's for customers or clients who should re-engage with you. Hey, Tommy, it's been about six months since we had a project together. I'd love to talk about re-engaging. I'd love to talk about some more work that we can do together. Whatever it is for you, your business, your specific use case. But most importantly, you want to tailor the email content based on their segment and behavior. So, for example, you do not want to send an email to Tommy after he schedules a call asking him to schedule a call. Or you don't want to have the sequences going at the same time. You want to make sure that if Tommy schedules a call, he gets removed from the first sequence, which is new leads, push to call, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm happy to answer questions on that. That gets a little into the logic of things. But again, this is <laughs> I, I love playing in this world. So um, just remember, think about it logically. If they schedule a call, remove them from emails that push to a call, et cetera. Just a little flow chart of a webinar follow-up system that we set up for clients. Somebody opts into a webinar, they get confirmation, they get retargeted, uh, they go to a call scheduling page, they have options for that. But after the webinar happens, they get the replay, they get followed up with, et cetera. So let's talk CRMs, lead and customer management. How do you manage the leads, hopefully the big flow of leads that's coming into your business? Well, a CRM, what, what is that? It's a way for you to easily visualize and organize your leads, even your customers. I know it's called a customer relationship management platform, but I just like to think of it as lead management. Um, So leading customer management, you can organize deals. You can see them visually. Uh, Here's an example of a CRM pipeline. 
all the different sales stages. And I think of it like sticky notes on a whiteboard. So I'm taking a sticky note from one column. Hey, somebody submitted an application and I'm moving them to call scheduled. Now, the system does a lot of this automatically. It, it, it moves people automatically, but there's still some manual work that needs to be done by the sales team or the business owner. Meaning if they schedule a call and they need to put them in nurture or like a drip campaign or they schedule a call and it was a, a new client. They want them. It's a one deal. Well, they need to do a little bit of manual work because that's the, the last line of defense. But essentially, you want to make sure that you have a solid CRM in place so you can organize and segment and view the deals. It's also nice to kind of see visually. I didn't include this in the picture, but you can see visual reports and charts over, man, I've got a million dollars worth of business in the pipeline. That's awesome. And we can see here, you know, uh, fr from here, he, he's got significant leads. And so when I'm looking at this business, I'm saying, okay, significant leads. Is the sales side working? But then I have to remember, okay, I, I can't solve everything. So next, let's move to social media tools before I get ahead of myself. Social media tools. I personally don't use these too much. We sit more on the paid side of things. But social media tools are great because they allow you uh, to schedule posts on all your platforms at once or automate the outreach on LinkedIn. Now, I'm not saying go and use LinkedIn automation and start messaging everybody. Hey, would you like to talk about your services? No, that's not the way to do it there. If you want to talk about that, then I'm happy to have that conversation, but use social media tools ethically in the right way. And they will save a lot of time. More specifically, you can post on your pages all in one place using something like buffer or Hootsuite. Um, this is my uh, LinkedIn. I, I just use this platform to connect with people. And then from there, I handpick the people I want to have actual conversations with. I don't automate that. But I could if, if I needed to in the future. Now, this isn't necessarily automation, but I, I, in my opinion, this is extremely important because it does save a lot of time. Analytics and reporting dashboards. Essentially, I've had clients before say, Daniel, Daniel, I need you to drop everything you're doing and send me a report. Tell me, is this working or not? And I say, okay, before I had this, I, I, would, I would spend a couple hours just compiling a bunch of reports. And nowadays, we create visual, real-time dashboards for clients using a program called Databox. Databox, Databox, however uh, you, you want to call it. But this allows my clients to come in bookmark this link on their phone, on their computer, and they can scroll through and see, hey, how much money have I made? What am I spending on Google, LinkedIn, and Facebook? Well, how many calls am I getting? Inbound book sales calls. How many purchases? How many applications? What's my gross profit? What's my MER? Or what's my costs after marketing and advertising spend? Or what's my profit after advertising and marketing spend? So this saves a lot of time because now my client is not... Um, having to, you know, ask me to drop everything and send them reports and et cetera. In a larger company, let's say the CEO has something like this. He doesn't have to go to a C-suite every so often and say, hey, CMO, hey, COO, hey, CFO, drop everything. I need a report in, in 10 minutes. I got a big meeting. No, he can quickly pull this up, screenshot it, or just have it live in a, in a presentation and go through certain things. Lead gen system. All right. Last but certainly not least, lead generation system. Now, I'd, I'd venture to say uh, most of you who are listening right now are interested in how do I get more leads for my business? That's the age old question. I, I, can't, I can't recall any time when a client did not want to learn about how to get more leads. So <laughs> I think it's pretty applicable. Uh, the Legion system. Now, there are a lot of marketing tactics and methods out there. You could put a billboard on the side of the street. You could spin up a, a trade show booth at your you know, conference or next trade show. Uh, but I like to focus on the digital side. So a lead generation system can be as simple as a, as a Facebook or LinkedIn ad campaign targeting your target market. Or let's talk about something a little bit more complex. However, it yields a lot better results. So I've done a lot. 
Uh, I've seen a lot. I've worked with a lot. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, successes, but I've also had a lot of failures. And I've realized that marketing is an art and a science. But more importantly, there's no silver bullet or one size fits all. That is not the case. So I'm, I'm saying if there's any agency out there you ever talk with that says, I've got just the cookie cutter solution. It's what we do for every client. Run far away fast because there's no silver bullet or one size fits all. However, the live webinar is the best performing lead gen system we've found to date. Now, this is very oversimplified, rudimentary chart, but you can see that we've tracked this data and the live webinar outperforms. It books calls at the lowest cost with the highest quality. It generates customers for our B2C clients at the lowest cost, and they're eager to buy more. It's not astronomically better, right? We're not talking a 15x different or anything like that, but you can see that this is real world stuff. I do not I do not live in the world of 1550x. I live in the world of real good old fashioned elbow grease marketing campaigns that truly work just using today's technology. So webinar system this is a complex chart that basically just shows you pump in traffic, you get registrants, they go on your email list and database, they get sent everywhere um, throughout your system, your CRM, your accounting even, but everything pushes back to the call scheduling page, that yellow box in the middle, everything, everything has an objective. We do not send to dead ends. We do not leave any uh, low hanging fruit just hanging. We say, hey, thanks for registering. Go ahead and book a call. Hey, your webinar is coming up in 24 hours. Why, why you're waiting? Go ahead and book a call. Let's get that out of the way. Hey, thanks so much for watching the webinar. Go ahead and book a call. Hey, retargeting ad. Hey, I see you on LinkedIn. You, you, you had a good time in the webinar? Let's go ahead and book a call. So <laughs> again, these webinar systems have outperformed, and I'm such a proponent of them, and there's no secret. You're, you're on a webinar right now. And you know, everybody does them a little differently. We have our own secret sauce. Uh, company, Other companies do it their way. But I, I'm sitting here and telling you, if you're not running webinars for your business properly, you're leaving money on the table. So let's talk real fast about how do you measure all this stuff? This is uh, just something I threw in at the last minute, just a little bonus. You want to analyze the stats. And I actually track everything. My team and I, we track everything in a spreadsheet for each client. We do that in addition to the real-time dashboards because we want to all, us as the service provider and the client as the business owner, we want to all stay accountable to the facts and figures and metrics. Otherwise, we just set up an automated dashboard, let it rip and say, oh man, I haven't checked it in six months. No, we input this stuff each week or every other week for certain clients, but mainly each week. Registrations, attendees, advertising spend, cost per registrant, conversion rates, revenue, profitability, if we have access to that, that information. We track the metrics that matter. There's no, uh, there, there's no smoke and mirrors here. The client has access to the, this sheet. It's about 140 rows, I believe. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very important to track your numbers on a weekly basis at bare minimum because you can keep your finger on the pulse of it. So let me, uh, let me check the time here. Yeah. 130. Okay, perfect. Let's talk real fast about building your marketing tech stack tailored to your needs, budgets, and goals, because that's what we came here for. How the heck do we build up a marketing automation tech stack? Tech stack is just a fancy word for the slew of platforms and programs you use in your business. Uh, and I want you to do three things to plan your platforms. Number one, list out your activities that you are currently doing and that you should, that you know you should be doing, that even your competitors are doing that you're not. You're like, man, I wish I could be doing that. List them out, what you're currently doing and what you should be doing. From there, I want you to audit your current tools. If you're just using one tool, hey, I'm just using Pipedrive or I'm just using HubSpot. Perfect. Just list it. But if you're using a lot of tools, list them all. List out the platforms you're currently using and noting anything that it should be replaced. Like, oh man, you know, that platform was good in 2004, but uh, it's 20 years too late for that. And then identify the gaps. Compare what you already have in place versus what you need. Plan it out for future activities by prioritizing connection capabilities. So when you're shopping around for platforms, and we'll talk about what you need in just a second, you want to prioritize the platforms that talk to each other natively or automatically. You want to look for tools that you don't have to you know, spin up some custom-coded 
API integration, webhook, or even using something like Zapier. You want to find programs that talk to each other, and you want to choose platforms that scale, that can scale with your business over time without it costing a whole lot more uh, money. And then you want to create a list of the platforms, what they cost, what they cost monthly, what they cost annually. And again, I'm sending this, the slides to you, and you can see that there's a link. So I'm giving you my tracking template. Um, it's not going to have my info on it. <laughs> It'll be blank. It's a template. But this is just our tracking template, our internal. So this is what my business costs to run, essentially. I even have on there my operational uh, platforms, such as accounting and payroll and stuff. But I personally like to put that on there because I'm able to see, okay, what does the whole enchilada look like? All right. Here's the example marketing automation tech stack. In a perfect world, if I could come into a business, wave my little magic wand, these are the platforms and programs that they would use. They would use a landing page builder. They would use email marketing platform. They would use a CRM, a call booking scheduler, video hosting provider, not just YouTube. They would use a dedicated webinar platform. They would use automation tools to connect platforms that don't easily talk to each other, but you can still connect them up for all the few that... that still don't, reporting dashboards, and advertising platforms. So advertising platforms, those are free. You just, you pay only when you, when you use them, when ads are running. But everything else, they have a little bit of a cost to them. And I want to show you just a second how uh, cheap they can get. But before that, there is a platform that I, I do like to recommend that takes the, uh, takes the place of a lot of the, the platforms I just listed off. I'm not going to talk too much about it. If you're interested, you can go back through the, the slide and kind of take a look. But um, it's, it's called High Level. And the only other platforms that our clients need when they use this platform or we put it in place is a dedicated webinar platform, automations platform, and ads platform. So let me talk about a success story real fast and we'll finish up. This is Brad, consulting firm. So this is the gentleman I've been showing you some of his examples visually. Uh, over the past year, we've helped him capture 14,000 email subscribers. We've generated, well, this is kind of old now, but generated uh, over 5,000 webinar registrants, name, email, phone number for his uh, appointment setter team to call and follow up with, in addition to watch the webinar. Uh, he's gotten I mean, over 1,200 now inbound book sales calls at about $66 per call. And I share this because I want you to understand that in time, these marketing automation platforms can help build a very well-oiled lead gen and lead nurture system. And we can quickly just kind of glance through these. We've looked through some of these already. And again, the link to each um, on these slide pages, they go to the actual asset or templates that I'm giving you. So um, use them if you have any questions about them. I'm happy to talk through them, happy to help you implement them, etc. Market research forms, remarketing ads, stats tracker, CRM. But I, I want to paint a picture that his business, I mean, candidly, it does millions per year. Um, but his tech stack it only costs about 650 per month to run. And I, I, I've even reduced that further. We've gotten a Zapier cost down further, but I want you to see this and, and know that it does not cost thousands. It does not cost tens of thousands for a lot of companies to, to run their platforms. It's a small drop in the bucket, but when done uh, properly, it, it works very, very well. And Thomas, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was just going to, so I, I guess I was just going to kind of jump out there and I think maybe we're in, in a good place here. Um, we, we've got about, uh, like I said before, I like to try and get everybody out of here in 45 minutes. And so um, we, we've got just a few minutes to take questions. And so I was just going to yeah. say, if anybody's got a question, if you would go ahead and put it in the chat yeah, box. Please. But I had a question right off the bat that I wanted you to I'm gonna yeah. kind of throw out there. And that is, have you seen... Like, do you have statistics that kind of show the small businesses, you know, the, that invest in marketing automation, you know, what is the return on investment? Um, yeah. Do you have any kind of numbers to that? Because I can, I, I'm going to share my company's numbers with that. I'm just curious if they happen to match yeah. up to what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, I, I, I had a graphic at one time. It's a little bit outdated and I normally don't share it because, uh, 
my attorney said not to put, <laughs> hey, you spend. Um, but honestly, I'll just share it. Disclaimer, results may vary. It, it, it changes for everybody. So if you're spending about $1,000 a month for the platforms, plus you have somebody you spend twenty five to about $60,000 for them to implement it, optimize it, and get it working over one year, then what we've seen on the back end is about a five, in some cases it can be up to a 15x, but about a five to seven x return. Um, so that means the system is working. And when I say the system, I include ads, lead capture pages, email automation. Um, so for us, we focus so much on the paid side of things that when we spend a dollar of the client's money, it pops out $7 in return through a normal sales cycle. You know, whether it's, right. you know, 30 days or 90 days, but that's generally what we see when it's a well-oiled system. Sometimes it takes three months to dial in, sometimes 12 months, but kind of in that six month sweet spot, we see a, a five to seven X ROI after marketing and ad costs. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and share what, what we have seen and yeah. that kind of lines up with what you're talking about. But uh, before I do that, I just want to let everybody know um melissa has uh, has picked the the winner of the uh, aubrey's gift card and i'm going to share that here in just a second but um so we're a 25 year old technology company we've been in this business for quite some time and we really only started doing marketing automation like seven years ago or so okay and what i can tell you is that our growth so for the first you know um, 15, 20 years, our growth was only about 3% a year. Okay. So year over year, we would grow about 3%. When we started doing marketing automation um, about seven years ago, and, and, and again, this is not something that happens overnight. And I think you kind of yeah. touched on that too, is that it takes a little bit of time to, to set this up and get it going. And it, and it is really difficult to do on your own as well. Um, we, we use a marketing company that's specific to IT technology um, that has helped us set up our marketing automation. Um, and so it has taken some time and it has taken some work, you know, on our part to, to get this all set up. But what I can tell you is that, you know, we went from 3% year over year growth to 18% year over year growth by mar by using the marketing automation system that we have in place. And yeah. so I think that's kind of in line with, you know, the five X yeah. that you're kind of talking about there. Um, you know, it, it, it really is when, when you've got a good marketing system that works, um, it, it really will produce results. And yeah. so, you know, that's kind of the key thing that I kind of wanted to leave everybody with. So, um, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, Daniel, do you have anything you want to wrap up with or any last thoughts? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll wrap up with some last thoughts and, and how they can get in contact with me in case they, they have some questions. I know sometimes it's just like, whoa, that's a what information. And then it, the questions hit them <laughs> the next day. So let me uh, let me finish up by by sharing this and we can get on out of here. So, again, it's. I focus on realistic systems. I do not ever come into a business and say, yep, 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 yep. We got a cookie cutter system. It's going to work. It's going to take three months. And no, it's different for everybody. There are patterns. However, with that being said, this stuff does work. Like Thomas said, it works. And when it done, when done correctly, it works very well. So I would like to spend my time, if you're interested uh, in a free, what I call just a systems consultation. It's just a time when I can get to know your business inside and out, just put together a game plan for you, give you real world costs, whether it's my company and I doing it or costs from even, you no, know, I, I shop around my competitors and I, I keep my finger on the pulse of the industry. So I'd love to spend some time with you uh, doing that. My website is beknownonline.com. My company name is Be Known LLC, and the website is beknownonline.com. You can find uh, the, the call scheduling link at beknownonline.com slash start. And Thomas, uh, I, I wanted to give everybody just a little, a little special, a little happy. Um, I'm willing to give $1,000 off our services. Uh, we have everything ranging from you know, some, some lower ticket stuff 
um, all the way up to we can be your marketing automation team almost quasi full time for a, a year long engagement. So everything in between, I'm, I'm very fair with with what we do. But my personal email is dpope, D-P-O-P-E, at beknownonline.com. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Again, I'll send you over the slides. If you didn't get them, please reach out to me at dpope at beknownonline.com. But Thomas, that's what I got for everybody. I, I appreciate it. Well, I really in, enjoyed the time that we spent. Um, there's uh, definitely a few things on there that uh, are super interesting. Um, let's see here. One of the, uh, okay, the data box. Uh, I was not, a, I had not heard oh, yeah. of data box before. And so I yeah. actually took a look at them because that's one of the things that uh, we're a little bit lacking in our in ours is a, is a good dashboard. And so I'm going to definitely going to take a look at that and see if we can in, use yeah. that. But anyway, uh, appreciate your knowledge. Um, yeah. You know, again, uh, my name is Thomas Hill. I'm with CD Technology and uh, Daniel Pope with us with Be Known. And uh, Summer, I picked your name out of the hat. Uh, so Summer with Expo Quip will be nice. receiving our $50 uh, Aubrey's gift card. And so we will make sure that Melissa gets that to you in the mail shortly. Um, so I really appreciate everyone being on the webinar with us and, um, we'll do another webinar next month. We're going to do a webinar that's talking about endpoint security and how it's not the year 2000 anymore. And so it's time to, to look at your endpoint security and, and, uh, make sure that you're not using the same off the shelf, um, stuff that you were using 20 years ago. So anyway, so we'll talk more about that soon. Daniel, uh, we'll have to get together for lunch again sometime real Absolutely. soon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thomas. We'll see you later now.